Hello, this is Daniel Thomas Sandra Daly. This is uh, Justice League of America DC Comics movie plot. So this is an idea that I've got for Justice League of America movie. And it stars the um, stars from the Justice League movie. Um, Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck and so on. Okay, this is, I've written this out a while ago. It's just, just sort of notes that I've got. Um, opening scene. Superman, played by Henry Cavill, puts on sunglasses. He's dressed in black leather. Batman, played by Ben Affleck, is in tan leather jacket and jeans. Both of them get in the Harley Davidsons. Born to be wild by Steppenwolf starts playing. The world's finest start cruising down the California highway. Gal Gadot was Wonder Woman was fair along the highway. She pulls, puts out her thumb on her, as a hitcher. And Batman picks her up and she gets on the back of his bicycle. Black Canary is fair along the highway. She puts out her thumb as a hitcher and Superman picks her up. Aquaman joins them in a bike with a side attachment, looking tough and cool. They continue driving along the highway. Flash, played by Ezra Miller, puts out his hand. The three bikes stop. Flash looks at the side attachment on Aquaman's bike. Aquaman gives him one of those. That's all we got, buddies. Looks sort of, you know, sort of like that. And uh, the next scene is Flash with his hands in the air like this. From behind, you see him as the three cycles drive away, drive off down the highway, and the music continues. Okay, so it's, it's similar to Born to Be Wild, the uh, movie um, uh, Easy Rider. It's it's, it's uh, paying homage to the Easy Rider opening scene because you can see that on YouTube. So it's it's paying homage to that. So it's celebrating America, as it were. Um, Okay, now scene two. The riders have arrived at Cyborg's pad. Cyborg's got a ranch. He lives on a ranch. Green Arrow is there also. The heroes have some info. Uh, some info. Uh, the heroes have some info. Cyborg's. It's at a. What have we got here? The heroes have come into Cyborg's basement on his ranch house. Cyborg's basement basement has a monitoring station. Um, probably in the basement, I think. Cyborg starts relaying the results of his recent monitorings of space activity. This has been an issue that has been discussed by the Justice League as of late. They have concerns about activity beyond Pluto. There appears to be a gathering of a small armada of spacecraft. Superman has yet to fly out there and see what is going on, and the group discuss that that is logically what he should do. Superman says at this stage, unless they pose some threat, they are to be treated as visiting aliens. You don't have a problem with visiting aliens, do you? Superman asks Batman. There is a stare between Batman and Superman. No, we don't, said Wonder Woman, and pushes Superman aside to ask Cyborg a question. The dialogue goes on, and while Batman is not satisfied about Superman's position, it is clear Superman has decided to simply leave the situation alone for the time being. Scene 3 at the Kuiper Belt. Beltar Jin, a female blue skinned humanoid Green Lantern from Sector 2813, the next sector to Earth, Sector 2814, has been chasing the Dominators from her sector to Sector 2814. Most of the Manhunters and Green Lanterns have fallen to the Dominators, and Beltar is putting up a final resistance to destroy her enemy, which has crushed her world and taken its natural resources and moved on to the next sector, Sector 2814, and is stationed at the Kuiper Belt surveying Earth. The head of the command ship comments to his lackey this, this information as they, are, as they are shooting at the Green Lantern, so it's discussed by the, by the um, Dominators. Belter is fighting a Dominator command ship, which zaps her, and while the Green Energy of the Ring shields her, she is throttled away into space. She wakes a while later and asks the ring what planets are nearby. Earth, of course, the ring replies to her. She tells the ring she is headed, to, she is headed for Earth and starts flying towards it. Scene 4 The heroes are in the house yard of Cyborg's ranch. Can you handle the heat? Cyborg asks Superman. Superman gets on top of the horse he is challenged on. I managed to stay on board the bucking bronco before getting off. Not exactly a challenge, says Batman. With his powers, I wasn't using any, replied Superman. 
I was raised on a farm after all. I'm sure you were, says Batman. Boys, enough with a mano and mano, okay, says Wonder Woman. If you are such a hero, you ride it, says Superman. Aquaman glances at Batman, who shrugs. He gets on the horse and goes around the paddock for a bit before being bounced off its back and landing in the dirt. Some hero, says Superman casually. You'll get yourself killed if you keep this up, Bruce. He's invulnerable, remember, Wonder Woman says to Bruce. He still bleeds replies Batman. You or me? Flash asks Aquaman. Cyborg shakes his head grinning. Let the man go first, said Aquaman, and gets on the horse. He successfully rides it to the horse car, uh, quietens down. Aquaman gets off and walks past Batman, patting him on the back, and says, Men from the boys. <laughs> so he's mocking him. My turn, yells Flash, and gets on. He lasts one buck and is bucked off. Cyborg is still grinning. All this bravado must go back to some grudge or something, says Green Arrow to Black Canary. You have no idea, one woman says to Green Arrow. More general chat as they head inside and stand around the bar. A cyborg pours and drinks. Superman only takes a ginger ale. Yep, a real man, says Batman on Superman's drink. Anyway, leaving that aside, I'm off to space, says Superman. Come to your senses, says Batman. Hardly. He's off to begins Wonder Woman. Just a sec. Oh, he's, he's, he's off to begins Wonder Woman. Mars finishes Superman. I noticed something strange when I passed by Bastard by recently. Want to check it out. There's something strange on that, says Batman. Just keep on going a few more million clicks or so. Superman gives Batman a look of frustration. Superman talks to Wonder Woman. Try to keep him in line, referring to Batman. Superman leaves. Aquaman proposes a toast to Atlantis, and as they drink, Batman and Wonder Woman look towards the door where Superman has left from. Scene 5. Uh, Superman is flying towards Mars. He flies quickly past the Green Lantern. The Green Lantern says, what the hell was that? Ring, follow that object. Superman comes to Mars and finds the object which he had noticed on a recent flight. It is an obelisk on Mars. He notices a figure in front of the obelisk praying. He flies down and introduces himself. I am Superman of Earth. What language do you speak? The alien is a Martian Manhunter. He says, I am John Johns. I speak your language. Mars has known Earth for a very long time. The Martian relates that this is a shrine to his fallen people who were who a race called the Dominators destroyed when they ransacked Mars centuries ago. The Green Lantern arrives and flies down to them. Superman asks who she, who she is. She tells him, the ring translates, uh, Martian Man not invites him down to his boat under the surface. In his abode, he tells him of a brief history of Mars and its destruction and that he is the last surviving inhabitant. Superman turns to Green Lantern and asks for her story. Green Lantern relates about her own sector's destruction also. At the hands of the dom do Dominators and the way of the Kuiper Belt. At the Kuiper Belt. That explains a lot, replies Superman. Superman tells the Martian and the Green Lantern that he is the head of the Justice League on Earth and that they will respond to the threat of the Dominators. Martian Man had to swear his vengeance of the Dominators and agrees to go with Earth as with Superman as does Green Lantern. The rest of the story is about a fe the fear of Earth citizens as the Dominator Horde gradually nears Earth. A fleet of spacecraft are sent out to fight the Dominators and Batman goes, but Superman stays on Earth with the rest of the League. The fleet is destroyed by the Dominators, but Batman escapes back to Earth. Further tensions then, the final fight which has been built up to with just League defeating the Dominators whose leader escapes, and Martian Man under Green Lantern join the Justice League of America. Okay, I've got a bit more information. Um, Beltar Jin's homeworld, Beltar 3, is in the same system as Beltar 4, the same system, a planet full of aquoid creatures, which feature in Green Lantern Volume 2, number 154 of the comics. Beltar 3 is, is more Earth-like than Beltar 4. And here's some of the dialogue from Beltar Jin. 
I was at home on my home world of Beltar 3. Out of the sky as you can see Beltar 4. It's on a similar distance from our sun, but circles slightly slower. They have a longer year. It's all aquoid to live there and we are regular Terran based uh, a regular Terran based planet. We have relations with them though, there is interconnectivity. They hit them first for dominators. Surrounded Belt F4 and drained off many of its useful mineral resources. Mineral resources. They killed a lot of its inhabitants ruthlessly. I fought them tooth and nail, and when they moved on to us, I'd taken out a fair few of them. It wasn't any good though, they were too strong. They violated us. They took our best cultural creations for the Dominion, ransacked and looted everything we were famous for. Then they took gold and silver. We have a lot of that, it's our wealth. And then when the last bits of resistance had broken, they established their outpost there and moved on. I've never stopped fighting them though, you know. I have a family at home, even now they're under Dominion control. I can't tell you how much I hate them. Whatever else, I'll fight with you, Superman, to destroy them. Whatever else. That explains a lot, replied Superman. Superman tells the Martian of the Green Lantern, and uh, I've said that, and uh, and they agree to, to fly to Earth with Superman as the Green Lantern. I was hoping to find the Green Lantern of Sector 2814. How Jordan, can he help us? asked Beltair Jim. We don't know where he's gone to, replied Superman. When the Justice League first emerged, Hal had been on the scene a while, but disappeared somewhere. I met him once when he revealed his ID to the League and he said he had to he had a mission to do, to look into ancient mysteries, things at the heart of the universe, and then he left Earth and has not yet returned. We have not seen him on Oa either, many moons have passed. He could have been a great help, replied Beltar Jin. Hal Jordan must do what he must do, said Superman. As, even, as each of us also must. So there are my ideas so far for the Justice League movie and the plot. I've also got ideas which are in a Facebook group um, on DC Comics, Life of the DC Comics Universe on what what happens with the Green Lantern. It's a, green, it's a separate Green Lantern idea and uh, how Jordan normally played by Ryan Reynolds because the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern is the one I'm using in this. And, um, that's basically plot ideas for a Justice League of America movie from um, Warner Brothers, hopefully. A project to get to ultimately, I suppose. There you go.